What is going on, guys? It is Joe. I am back. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. We're talking about K-State Athletics. You see the thumbnail. You see what specifically we're talking about. We're going to talk about University President Richard Linton. This is our second time doing so on the channel. First time around, it was about the Naquan Thomas situation, and I'm sure to an extent I probably came off a little condescending and petty or mean or whatever. This video, I'm not trying to do that. That's not the idea of what I'm going for. Obviously, I've kind of already made it clear my opinion, my stance on Richard Linton and Kansas State, uh, but that's not going to be the idea of this video. So the point of this video... There was a new interview dropped today for some reason. I get the, at the time you're saying this will be the day before, discussing the Naquan Tomlin situation from the point of view of Richard Linton with the Manhattan Mercury. They dropped a story, and I'm going to go through that. I've already pulled up two different pages on Google Docs of completely written out material um, that I either had an issue with or wanted to comment on and just provide my thoughts around it because I know that I could sit here and do the name-calling mean things of this guy stinks, whatever. Everybody already does that. It's already been done. Today we've got a lesson in critical thinking. I'm going to walk you through the stuff that caught my eye in there, and then I'm going to tell you where the thought process goes based off that. This video is not intended to make you feel a certain way about the topic, because I know there are, you know, there's a, a, a vocal minority of you that do feel like, uh, okay, Linton's in the right here, stand up for integrity, Tang, Taylor, they're wrong, whatever the case is. So I want to give you guys the benefit of the doubt and say that I'm not trying to influence your decision or change it, but I wanted to talk you through the same way I do, you know, with everything else. This is a topic related to Kansas State Athletics. I'm going to tell you what I think about it, because I think that's that's the point of the channel. That's what I'm here to do. Uh, so we're going to get right into it. So the article, I've got it pulled up off here to the side. So if you see me looking this way, I'm just kind of reading what I wrote earlier. It addresses a couple of different things. It's uh, Richard Linton's you know, relationship with the university, relationship with Tom, the relationship with Taylor and Tang, uh, why he did what he did, what he did, you know, what's wrong, what's right, denying rumors, all that, all that. In this, I pulled out specific bullet points, specific paragraphs, specific quotes we're going to talk about, starting with this. The first thing. Richard Linton in here talks about his working relationship with both Jerome Tang and Gene Taylor. And the direct quote was this, our working relationship is very good. Those two, and referencing Tang and Taylor, have moved past it and we want to keep working together. I have logical questions about the, uh, le the legitimacy of the claim that they've all moved on because you wouldn't post this. Your athletic director wouldn't want this out. It's going to hurt the university. The university president shouldn't want this out. It'll hurt the university. The basketball coach Definitely doesn't want this coming out because it's going to hurt recruitment. It's going to influence coaching cycle. It's going to influence your roster, guys leaving, guys staying, whatever. That's a bad time to put this out. So there's step one. Number two, Richard Linton admits fault. Linton says he wishes that he was more clear and outspoken about Naquan Talman never being allowed to return to the men's basketball team. Here's the direct quote. I think that it might have helped the situation for sure. I think in retrospect, when all the information was coming out, I wish I would have been a little bit more proactive. I think the communication line could have been better coming out of the university and out of athletics. So my brain would go to this. If you wish you were a little bit more proactive, why not settle for being active? Why not start by saying anything? Why not mention anything? And I know, I know that the immediate, well, he can't say stuff. He can't say things. You know what he can do is release a statement on behalf of the university president to the entire student body and all of Kansas State. He did that. And in there, he did nothing. It was nothing. It was just more conflicting information with different reports we've heard this off season, or this season, excuse me, that answered no questions and didn't put anybody in a good light, really. No one emerged victorious in the situation. I know that's not the case, but like, there was no clarity on this. And the one thing we did see, actually, which we'll talk about a little bit later, is the line that says this will be the only comment from Kansas State University and Kansas State Athletics on the situation. Put a pin in that and we will move forward. Next thing. In there, there's a quote that talked about the relationship between the university and the athletics, because it seems like, you know, through the three or four different uh, statements we've seen, you know, press releases and different statements and Twitter things, and different, we keep seeing this idea come up that Linton's like, fans need to understand that the university and athletics aren't separate. We are one and the same. I don't know if he knows, and this is the in the nicest way possible, I don't know if he knows that nobody cares about that. I don't think he understands that, because it's not even about you understanding your role is over here while athletics is over here. That's not what anybody's mad about. It's the fact that if you are so close and together, how come you're not moving as one with the coaching staff, with the players, with the AD? I know that you're representing the university, they're representing athletics, but if it's one and the same, you can't have this separation. You can't have four different statements from three different people and they all loosely say the same thing, but in drastically different ways. That can't be the case if it's one and the same. If you're connected Usually you bounce things off of each other and say, this is a good idea. Let's do this. Let's not do this. Uh, to bring some good light on the university, let's talk about it this way. Let's not do this. That's something a connected athletics and uh, university would do together. That's what most universities would do together. Not this one. 
which basically tells you that it's not one and the same. But Richard Linton continued down that road. After that, he talked about this idea, you know, he then says, we're very connected. I'm a huge supporter of athletics and he even points to jerseys on his wall being like, look, I have basketball jerseys on my wall. That means I'm a fan, which is true. If you have memorabilia on your wall, that means you're a fan. I'm not a fan. I don't like, I guess I don't like any, uh, any case state athletics. Cause there's no, no jerseys on the wall, which is tough. Um, I'm a huge sport of athletics. Always have been connected. Uh, I always have been connected at the hip with Gene Taylor and connected at the hip with all of our coaches. Bubble point. We have a bubble thought here popping up that uh, prompts in my head and it should prompt in your head as well. I wonder if you're as connected at the hip that you say you are with Jerome Tang and Gene Taylor, I wonder if you ran it by them that you were going to sit down for an exclusive interview for a four-month-old story two days after the college basketball season ended the day after the transfer portal opened and you were going to talk about all the negative side of what could have been done better. I wonder if you bounced off the idea that, Hey, let's do this. This is a great time. The portal's opening. Uh, coaches are leaving programs left and right. Let's talk about it now. That's the perfect time. And I know, I know what you're going to say because th- those that are doubters or those that disagree would say, well, Linton got crucified for not talking about it. Now that he's talking about it, we're all crapping on him. Absolutely. The time frame is horrible. There is no sugarcoating that coach Tang wouldn't tell you different. Uh, Gene Taylor wouldn't tell you different. Heck, nobody would tell you different. The biggest story in Manhattan right now is the women's basketball team hosting an NCAA tournament game. And Richard Linton decided, you know, this can't wait another week. This can't wait another two weeks. What are we doing, timeline-wise? If you're as connected at the hip as you say you are, I wonder how they reacted to that. You know, hey, this is a great idea. The AD says, you know, I think we should really release more stories of this caliber as the portal opens up. That's a great idea. It doesn't hurt any type of recruitment. It doesn't hurt any type of... uh, Guys coming in are interested in Kansas State. It definitely doesn't hurt our brand at all. So let's do this right now. This is the perfect time. I agree with you. That's probably what happened. I'm just, you know, I'm pulling back the curtain for you guys. Since they're really close to the hip, I wanted to pull back the curtain on what the relationship looks like of what Gene Taylor would say and what Jerome Tang would say. And I think they'd both be like, yeah, that's a, that's a really great idea. Let's do this. That's a perffect idea. That's not going to hurt us at all in the long run. Uh, Richard Linton talks graduation, folks. Graduation. I actually, when I graduated, I walked across the stage and I shook hands with Richard Linton. And I talked about it in my last video. It was a floppy fish handshake, and it was really gross, and I was upset by that. At the time, I didn't think he was a bad dude, uh, but that was a pretty gross handshake, and I don't forget that to this day. There's a video of it. I have a video on my phone saved, and it lives in infamy. It was a floppy handshake. It was a floppy fish. I remember I was pissed about that walking off the stage because I paid, you know, you pay that much money to go to university for four years, five years, get a degree, and the biggest moment of your life where you're walking across the stage in front of all your family and loved ones, someone just was like, yeah, great, good for you. Glad to be here. Yeah. That sucks. This is the quote. I think all of us wanted to be able to provide an opportunity for him to graduate. And I think that a uni- that's a university commitment and an athletic commitment. I also think the coaches wanted him to graduate. Or He says, and I think the coach wanted him to graduate. The coach. I don't know which coach he's referring to. I'm sure he's referring to Jerome Tang, but he also might not be on a first-name basis with Coach Tang. Uh, so he thinks the coach wanted him to graduate. And I think that was one of the really positive outcomes that he could graduate. That's really the, posi- the, that's really the positive thing you can say here. We can say here because they're joined at the hip. We. Um, yeah, I think the coach really wanted him to graduate too. I think everybody wanted to graduate. He's a first time college graduate and, uh, he's a kid that's going to walk across the stage as a representative of Kansas state university and remember this moment forever. That's great. That's sweet. That's fine. That's dandy. I'm not going to take that away. I have a question about that. You know, the, let's just toss in a good little feel good. Hey, he graduated. That's good for him. The idea that Richard Linton cares about Naquan Talman's graduation. Good for Naquan. That's a good deal. Good for the president saying that's something. Uh, first things first, he missed the graduation ceremony. The biggest moment in Naquan's life, guess who wasn't there to shake his hand? But Naquan, he didn't miss much. Once again, it's a floppy fish. What I will say is that if you care about the kid's future and you really want to do something great for him, I would question your legitimacy or your, your effort to, your commitment to his future if you're willing to put out a story four months, this happened four months ago, folks. If you're willing to put this out now, as the basketball season's over, Quan's time in college basketball is done, Kansas State's time in college basketball is done for this year. What's the next thing that happens in the college basketball cycle after the March Madness tournament? How about the NBA draft and the NBA draft workouts? Naquan Tomlin, who left Kansas State after being projected as a top 20 pick, he's now roughly in the second round if things go his way. Uh, I question the idea of putting out a PR hit like this when it comes to three months to the NBA draft. I think that's a questionable, questionable decision when you care about his future and his graduation. So, but maybe it's not the case. You know, maybe he's just, uh, you didn't see the irony in that. So the last thing that poked out in the article, and I want to say, if I'm coming off condescending, I apologize. I really tried not to. Might have came out of me. This is all still just reported. You know, this is just actual reports that we're all able to talk about. So 
If I upset you guys, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to draw a line in the sand between us, but this is where I stand. It's where I stand on the situation. It's how I feel about it. And I think a lot of the stuff that was said in this article is kind of ridiculous, to be honest. Speaking of ridiculous, that word was used for Mr. Richard Linton in this article. Falsifying one of my good friends, someone who I believe is a good role model, a guy who cares about people, loves people, and works his tail off for a university that he cares about and loves. My friend Tim Fitzgerald, who was slandered just ruthlessly through this process. And I know I'll sound like one of those nerds that's saying, you're slandering me right now. I'm not trying to do that. But Fitz got a lot of crap from people being like, yeah, these are probably all false reports. In here, we talked about said report. Linton said some of the reporting was completely inaccurate. That's probably on me. I, you know, nothing I say is accurate. Uh, recalling one published account of an argument he and Tang supposedly had near or in the locker room uh, against Villanova in that Villanova game, which was also the Free Naquan uh, chant game. So that's something to talk about. Uh, this is what he had to say about that. Ridiculous. Didn't happen. There's our word again, see? There would have been 20 cell phones and a camera walking in and out of the locker room. Sure, that makes sense. Cameras are good. You know, a lot of people pull out cameras. This is the change. Because Linton thought that that was important to say that he didn't yell at, uh, he didn't yell at Coach Tang, he wasn't the only other person that was subjective, especially in those reports. If you paid attention, the report was corrected by Go Power Cat. Fitz, my good friend, replied to a tweet from Kevin Bailey. Kevin, if you're watching this, shout out to you, my friend. You did great. Kevin Bailey tweets, basically this story from the Mercury confirms everything that Fitz and Go Power Cat reported through unnamed sources all the way back in December, which I know a lot of people didn't want to mess with because they're like, yeah, Fitz stinks. That guy's the worst. He's not. He's a great dude, a great reporter. Fitz responds to that tweet, believe it or not, and he says, I would like to point out that the information the president brings up was corrected, which I actually read that correction, which he didn't mention, probably because the altercation was between the university president and a significant donor before the game. I might add, it's still childish and petty to tell a huge donor that it's none of your business. I'd comment on that, but maybe it's none of my business. Good tweets regarding the situation. Let's talk about this. There were some good tweets about it. There are some really good people that voice their opinions about it that I think are smart, uh, lovable, trustworthy people, and they just had good things to say. So I'll run you through that. My friend Joel Anderson, love Joel to death, good dude. Joel tweeted out about this. And I think most of these tweets are pretty impartial. Like, I don't think, even if you agree and you're like, if you're like, okay, Joe, you're stretching the truth here, you stink at what you do, I hate you, all these tweets are still going to line up with your, with your POV here. They're going to look at you and say, okay, yeah, I get what he's saying there. You know, even if you're like, yeah, you're wrong about this, you're going to understand what I'm saying. How about this one? Joel tweets, the timing with this is insane. The coaching carousel is just heating up. Recruiting is about to be at its peak. Shame on the Mercury and shame on Dick Linton. Now, all that's true. I mean, all that's true. You think about that. Recruiting is right around the corner. People are already in the portal. K-State's been linked to multiple guys. It's hard to be linked to people when you don't know what the heck's going on on the campus. I mean, you don't know if the university president's doing whatever. You don't know if the coach is doing whatever. You don't know if anybody wants to come recruit. So that's something to keep in mind. And I'm not going to comment too much on that, but that's a great tweet from Joel and I love you. John Kurtz tweets out, in reference to the line that this will be the only comment that is issued from Kansas State University and K-State Athletics, Kurtz puts out a tweet saying, there have now been three very public comments about the Talman situation since this was put in a press release. Yeah, there have been. There sure have been. And I wonder whose decision of the three of them, since they're tied at the hip, which one of those three decided, let's do this. This is a good idea. It probably wouldn't have been you know, it probably would have been all three of them in solidarity talking about it, saying, since we're so connected and tied at the hip, let's all three agree to comment three separate times on this after putting out a statement saying we won't ca- we won't be commenting on this. That's a really good thing for, you know, good buddy friends to do. So that's something to keep in mind. Allison Renner, I can hear myself being super condescending and I apologize. It's, it's, the Batman mask is off now. I mean, we're full, whatever. Allison Renner tweets out about this. And this is a really good tweet and it should not be taken lightly. This is the main story to focus on here. That really pissed me off. I'll be honest with you. It really pissed me off to see what happened. K-State women is hosting March Madness in 24 hours. That is the biggest story in Manhattan. It's time to give the full support to the women's team. I will not waste another ounce of attention on someone who continues to dig a deeper PR hole for themselves. How out of touch do you have to be to release a massive barn burner of a story where everyone associated with your university, even loosely associated with your university, is going to be reading at a high rate saying, what the hell's going on? We got to focus on this. We got... Do you understand how much of a distraction that is, not only to your players, not only to your coaches, not only to whatever, not even to you as a university president, do you understand what that does? It takes all of the light away from an incredible women's team that has become one of the top 16 teams in the country and is hosting March Madness for two games. A team that worked their tails off, and you're going to throw that out because you're like, you know what, now's the right time to talk about Naquan Tomlin, a player that left our program four months ago. This is the perfect time. Yeah, so... 
there's that. Last tweet, and then I'll get out of here because I know it's getting a little long and I have to edit some. My friend Fitz, we'll bring Fitz back up. Fitz put out a tweet saying, no one is condoning any behavior. I mentioned this earlier. No one is condoning any behavior, but the actual incidents were not that serious and settled, despite what is being said. This was a grotesque overreaction, a final decision that only took place once students exercised their First Amendment rights to peacefully protest. Boy, I don't know how many of you know the, know the Constitution, but that is the First Amendment. That's part of it. Situation was under control to an extent. Obviously, people were pissed off. And then so you get a you get a protest, a peaceful protest of students who are exercising their first right amendment. And then the only thing that changes Naquan and uh, and Tyler Perry drive by. Don't get out of the car. Don't do anything. Quan signs one poster. And then that night he's off the team. That's how quick this stuff happens. So with all that being said, I think it's a time for reflection. And I'll leave you with this thought. I'll leave you with this uh, with this saying here because I think it's important. Proverb 27, 6. I don't know if you've heard of it, but here it is. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. We'll talk to you in the next one. I don't want to talk about Richard Linton anymore. We'll talk to you later.